It is quite shocking to see a memoir filled with so much brutality and vigor. Just how did the Germans fare so well against the Russians? Hello, everyone. Today we talk about the war-stricken memoirs of a junior officer who served in the 13th Company of the 1st Regiment of the 3rd SS Panzer Division, Totenkopf. Let's begin. In July 1944, my fiancé wanted us to get married, but I was afraid of dying and turning her into a widow too soon. I was in charge of 30 cadets, ski rangers. Some of them were harassing the young girls in the kitchen. To stop this, I took them through the snow all night. After that, they stopped bothering the girls. Then, as you might know, the Russians broke through to the bridge at the station. This made everyone very worried because it was really dangerous. The whole reserve battalion was split into groups and each group had to defend a certain area. My group was on the other side of the Oder River. There wasn't a bridge there, just a ferry. There were a lot of people trying to escape, like old folks, kids and animals, all in horse carts. We got orders to build a safe place for defense. First, we were told to build a safe spot on the dam by the Oder River. But the dam was far from the river and bushes and trees had grown in between. So we changed our plan and built our spot right by the riverbank. I can't remember the name of our leader at that time. They changed our leader quickly and Otto Lumnius took over. We had a bunker in our defense area, built according to the rules, with an AMG machine gun. The bunker was there to protect the bend in the river on our right side. There was a flat area about 120 meters long with just one tree. Behind that, there was a group from the Waffen SS. And on our left, where the ferry was, the Wehrmacht stayed at night. We sent people to check the next village. Russians were already present in the area. We didn't have to wait long before they appeared. Within a couple of days, they were in front of us. Despite their lack of heavy weaponry, they attempted to cross the Oder River in three boats where there was a flat stretch of land. We managed to destroy them. None of them survived. Plus, the water in the Oder was freezing cold. If someone fell in, they couldn't swim out. One morning, we lost contact with a nearby company on the left side. Orders came for us to retreat towards Breslau on our side near the ferry. There was a house where a woman lived with her three daughters. As we were retreating, we asked her to come with us to Breslau. However, they chose to remain in the house. I still wonder what became of them later on. In any case, we retreated and then had an unexpected counterattack against the Russians. They were thrown into confusion. It was something they hadn't anticipated at all. They suffered heavy losses. Following that, our company was assigned a role as a fortress reserve. Being a fortress reserve meant that we frequently engaged in close combat. We either countered the Russians who had broken through, conducted reconnaissance, or stabilized defense sectors due to the numerous assault units in Breslau. Many of our battles took place near the Gondor airport. The Russians had entered that area because the unit under the command of Speckman had fled from there. We launched a nighttime counterattack against the Russians, but we couldn't completely regain control of the area since they had concentrated a significant number of forces there. Nonetheless, we held on to this part of the city for a substantial period. The airport was used for transportation, with planes frequently landing to deliver ammunition and evacuate the wounded. This included the coverage of Frankfurt Street. It's a very long street. At the intersection, there was a railway embankment, the Volkssturm, a German militia, defended that area. The Russians managed to capture the first three houses behind the railway embankment. I was just 10 years old at the time. The soldiers were given orders to drive the Russians out from there. We did so, unfortunately losing one soldier, but we managed to capture a Russian anti-tank gun. Following that, we were commanded to clear the defensive line. This defensive line consisted of a massive complex of bunkers with two floors, concrete walls, and galleries covered with trees and bushes. This area was defended by a part of the Wehrmacht. Unexpectedly, the Russians launched an attack and managed to capture the entire complex except for the largest bunker, which was still held by the Wehrmacht. We were instructed to aid them in breaking through the Russian forces, consisting of around 60 soldiers from a penal unit. We armed ourselves extensively for this task. Equipped with Panzerfausts, we spread out along the front and initiated an assault, using hand grenades and firing from the Panzerfausts. The Russians responded with intense gunfire. We retreated twice to a large bunker and called in artillery fire. Eventually, we launched a final attack, and the Russians surrendered, laying down their weapons. Out of our group, 27 of us remained. We continued to fight in a similar manner. In Breslau, there were substantial food depots for the front lines and many support units. Despite being surrounded, these resources stayed in Breslau, and we received reinforcements from them. 
However, some of these new troops didn't even know how to shoot. One of the fresh additions remarked, Oh my god, I'm in the Waffen SS now, I can write a will. That's it for today's video. If you want to listen to more scary real life stories, be sure to like, subscribe, and let us know what you think of this soldier's diary account.